I was thinking about this. I don't know what your father was like. I've only read one word that he was gruff. And, my, right. and to me, that doesn't sound very good. But I would imagine having, being, once you get to your level, right. and once you have Secret Service all the time, and once you have these guys kind of taking care of you, they're almost like the fathers that weren't good to you. They worry about your every move. They worry about your safety. They constant. They drive you. You almost become infantilized in a oh, sense. You've got to fight against it. I mean, I, again, I think that's pretty perceptive. The, your therapy really... It's paying off. <laughs> it, it pays it's off. You've got it's it's really it. insightful. Have you ever done it? Have you ever no. done... You've never tried it. I've never tried it. No. I can't imagine after the election you didn't say, I need someone to talk to. Well, but I did. I talked to... Well, no, no. I, we did have, we, I've done counseling. Yes. So it, it right. wasn't intensive therapy, but I've done counseling. Yeah. You, you've gone to somewhere where you feel safe enough. Yeah. So it wasn't a psychotherapist. No. But no. it was an MD? No. Just a psychologist. 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 Yeah. I would think you would go to an MD. Mm, no, because this was, this was in the late nineties when there was lots going on in my oh, life, as you remember. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so we did have somebody come in and it was more marriage counseling. Oh, but you never <clears> did <throat> individual therapy. No. Mm -mm. So, so who do you talk to after the election? I've read a really sweet moment after this horror of the night, you and, and your husband lay down at night, you're laying on your back, he's laying on his back and he takes your hand and holds yeah. your hand. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. it, it's the most sweet well, gesture. Know, and what else can you he's do? A, yeah, he, he's, he's been a terrific um, you know, support. <clears throat> and I, I also have great friends. I have wonderful friends. I lost two friends and my brother this year. And it's, the holidays are hard this year because I miss all three of them so much. And they died in May, June, and July. So it was like, bang, oh. bang, wait, who bang. died? Your brother died. I know so that. my brother died. Your uh, younger in brother. June. He's my, one of my two younger brothers. Yeah. My right. youngest, a really, really close friend of mine died in May. Who was that? A name, a uh, woman named Ellen Tauscher. Right. She was a congresswoman from California. She was also the undersecretary for arms control in the state department. When I was there, a secretary of state negotiated the new start agreement with the Russians. Just an amazing woman. And then my and you would call her, <clears throat> and she would talk. She'd to come you. visit me. She came and visited me a lot. And then my best friend from sixth grade, who had been fighting breast cancer for ten years, but never let it interfere with her incredible love and compassion for all of her friends, plus obviously her wonderful family. <clears throat> Finally, she ran out of things to help her stay alive, and she died at the end of July. So, you know, I. I have had Isn't this age a bit. Oh my God. Like Howard. you're watching people. Do you think about death? Not, I don't think about it. I, I think, I mean, I think about it because as you just said, I'm losing people that I care a lot about because right. many others have died too. But those three were particularly hard. Are you deeply religious? I am. Yeah. I have, well, I have a, I have a deep faith. Yeah. Methodist. Deep, Methodist. Yeah. That's important yeah. to you. It is important to me. You believe there's a God and that we're going to go. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, I do. I believe that. And I believe that it won't happen in my lifetime, yours, and won't happen for a long time. I think that the, we're learning more and more about what holds the universe together. I mean, dark matter makes up most of the universe. We really don't quite know what it is, but it's energy. And if you believe in, see, I think, I think religious beliefs and science are compatible, unlike those who reject one or the other. And so I think that energy doesn't die. Energy keeps going. Oh, uh, that's comforting. <clears throat> I got a feeling I'm going to just be in the ground, but who knows? But this, this, well, your this, body will be probably this, this, yeah. this gesture by your husband to just sit and hold your hand. Yeah. It's an important moment, right? Because there's nothing to say mm -hmm. after you've, after mm -hmm. you've worked your ass off your whole life right. to get to this presidency. Mm -hmm. And, and, and was that the dream when you were a little girl that you would someday be the president of the United States? Not at all. Was it to be a lawyer? No. When yeah. did that come around? When I was in college. And, and yeah. the father, I, I ask you this because what does it mean when you say your father is gruff? My, my father um, was a, I guess, typical man of his time. You know, he was, um, lived through the depression. He was a chief petty officer in the Navy during World War II um, he wasn't the most emotionally literate person. Right. 
but he had a good heart. He he was a hardworking man, um, but he didn't really understand different ways of communicating. So when I say he was gruff, he yelled a lot, right? right? He yelled a lot. And he would get upset about things. And he would knock my brothers around. Mm. Uh, not me, but my brothers. <clears throat> and he was, you know, just really old-fashioned. And, and we lived in a neighborhood. Were like, you afraid of him? No, I was never afraid of him. No. But I mean, Could I would, you ever go to him and say, I'm having a hard day? <clears throat> no. No way. No. I mean, that was, you know, again, he was so much like all the other men in the neighborhood that I grew up in and the friends, fathers that I knew. They all had that kind of depression, World War II mentality. And they all wanted to work hard. They all wanted to be good providers. That's how they defined their lives. Yeah. Um, they loved sports. Yeah, that's how I understood you know, how men were. That's, As a boy that, growing up, I thought... the only ones we knew, right? I, yeah, I, I'm supposed to grow up, have <clears> kids, and make sure I make money from them. That's it. That's it. And then I'm done. Oh, but you can also throw the ball around, you right. know? I mean, my father, you know, we would do you know, football pass routines. We would go to the park. He, I loved softball. He would, you know, pitch and, and, and coach me. I mean, he, he was just a man of his time. And your mother is more complex. Oh, my mother reminds me of my mother in the sense that your mother had a horrible childhood. She did. Her, her, her parents, what they, they gave her away or something. Well, she was born to two teenagers to start with. Right. Um, and they were really, immature, irresponsible. So they had this little girl, but uh, they never really knew what to do with her or how to take care of her. I One story she told me that I just can't ever forget. She was like three years old and her father was off working somewhere and her mother was going to go out. And so her mother gave her a meal coupon. Mm. They're living in a tenement in Chicago um, and told her that when she got hungry, she should go down the stairs, out the door, down to the corner, to the little restaurant, and give them the meal ticket and get fed. So, mm. you know, she would go to school and she never had any food. And in those days, they didn't have like a big cafeteria. You brought what you're going to eat from school uh, to school. And so my mother was neglected. She was basically abandoned. She had a little sister a few years younger who was also... Uh, treated that way. So when my mother was about eight, um, her parents decided they just didn't want to take care of her anymore at all, uh, or the little sister. So they put her on a train in Chicago by herself in charge of her little sister, who Can was like imagine? five, I can't, and sent her and her little sister to live with their paternal grandparents. And the paternal grandparents didn't want them either. Uh, but took them in because their son basically said, here, uh, we don't want them. You take them. So my mother lived there for about four or five years. It was miserable. And then she left that house and she took a job as a housekeeper and a babysitter. She was 13 years old, Howard. And so she, uh, Gee, you know, I didn't know any of this when I was a little girl. But how does that affect your relationship with your mother? In well, the sense that when you have a woman, Right. Who has gotten nothing. Right. How does she have anything to give you? You know, I'll tell you what was so remarkable about my mother, because I've read about your mom and my mom was also depressed. Right. She would, you know, we didn't know what that was, but, you know, she would be really sad. Some days she didn't want to get out of bed. She was just so sad. And she, I don't think a, an, a day went by. I know a day didn't go by. Maybe an hour didn't go by where she wasn't wondering why she hadn't been loved, why her parents didn't love her, why they sent her away, why her grandparents were so cruel to her. Yes. But I said to her one time, I said, I, you know, once I learned about this, I said, you know, how did you do it? I mean, how did you survive? And how did you turn out to be resilient and wanting to be a mom and wanting to do the best you could for your kids? Here's what she said. She said, at critical moments, somebody was kind to me. Hmm. And so, you know, like the, when, when she didn't have any food in first grade and finally the teacher would bring extra food without humiliating her. And she'd say, oh, you know, Dorothy, I, I just brought too much food today. Would you like my extra sandwich? Wow. Or, and, and that teacher did that for the whole year. 
Well, what can yeah. you get from a mother like that? I would imagine you growing up, and uh, you were a bright student, you did well and everything. When I'm talking about your emotional needs, I can't imagine your mother taking care of any of your emotional needs or being able... Did she ever say to you, what are you complaining about, Hillary? I didn't have anything. You've got two parents. You've got a home. Stop she, your nonsense. She never said that. Really? She never said that. What she would say instead is, short of that, she would say, you know we really want you to have the best life and the best education. And then you can make whatever decisions you want. But Do you think she was jealous of you? No, I don't think she was jealous. I think, how could she not be? Because I think, and you know, she was a remarkable person because with all of this turmoil, she never lost her desire to learn things. So she never got to go to college. Right. I mean, this, this is the final in, in, insult. So she graduates from high school because when she took that job in the other woman's home, she didn't think she'd get to go to high school. Right. And so the woman said to her, this is another one of those acts of kindness. Um, would you like to go to high school? And my mother said, I really would. And, and the house she was then living in and taking care of was one um, town over. And she said, but I want to go to the high school where all my friends were, the people that she'd gone to school with up until then. So, the woman said, well, if you get up early and you get your chores done, you can go to high school. But you'll have to come right back after mm. school. She would. Now, that sounds harsh if you're a 13-year-old. To my mother, it was a gift. Right. So she'd get up at the crack of dawn. She'd get the kids ready, whatever she had to do. And then she would run to high school. And then she would run back afterwards. She had, she had, um, you know, talk about clothes. She had two blouses. Um, but she was like a skirt. slave. No. I mean, she was like a... a she didn't feel that. She, she didn't... This, I mean, I'll tell you what she said to me. It was the first house she'd ever been in where the husband and the wife loved each other, right. treated each other right, loved the children, cared about them, set standards for them. My mother said, I learned how to be a wife and a mother from living in that house for oh, four wow. years. Yeah. So she gets out of high school. And, you know, California had this great higher education system, and she could have gone for practically nothing. Her mother, her biological mother, contacts her and says, oh, I've heard you graduated from high school. I'm remarried. Would you like to come to Chicago? And my new husband and I will send you to college. Hmm. So for my mother, it was like, oh, wow, maybe my mother does care about me. So she leaves California, she goes to Chicago, and they wouldn't send her to college. They wanted her to keep house for them. Oh. Holy mackerel. Yeah, I mean, you can't, I mean... It the, gets worse. It gets worse. So, but my mother, you know, it, it emotionally, it was devastating to her, but she was smart enough. She was really smart. She was smart enough that she, and she read psychology like it was going out of style. Every book she could read about how children were formed, what development meant, she read. So she had an intellectual, I'm not saying it affected, I'm not saying that it did away but with the hurt. she had an in intellectual understanding yes. of raising children. Yes, and and wow. and worked at it and, and was a terrifically supportive, uh, loving mother. Were you always brilliant in school? Because, uh, I mean, to go to Yale and to go to, um, um, where did you do your undergrad? Wellesley. Uh, Wellesley, yeah. I mean, to get into those schools. Look, I worked hard. You know, I mean, I'm Were smart. Were you a hard but worker? I worked, uh, but, but, uh, but, really hard worker. Yeah. I'm a really hard worker. Yeah. No, you are. Yeah, I am. Like, that's why I wanted <laughs> yeah. you to be present. Yeah, I would have been actually working hard right now. As oh, speaking. I yeah. know you would have been. But, so I, I I was a hard worker, and I was smart enough. You were captain of the uh, Hall Patrols. You know, I was captain <laughs> of the Hall Patrols. It was the most horrible thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Unlike you, you got elected, right? Uh, yeah, I think I did. I was appointed. <laughs> And it was a nightmare. I got beaten up by everybody because of that. <laughs> did, did you wear the, the belt? The belt, the, yeah. The, the, the white, it was the white, a white belt. belt. Went around your waist and then and up over your and chest. And the badge. Right, and the badge. <laughs> oh, yeah. my yeah. God. And then you'd stand at the corner. You'd supervise everybody helping oh, yeah. the little oh, kids but, go but, across but the street. I was in a very rough neighborhood. And I and the kids would go, you're a captain of the hall patrols. And then they would beat me up <laughs> <laughs> to prove that, that they could beat up the police. Which yeah, of was course. Essentially that was, what they I were was. practicing on you. Oh, I, I just wanted to give that badge and throw it down the river. 
it was just a nightmare. But when you when you get into a uh, Wellesley, right, I mean, you right. gotta you've got to have high academics, and you have to have high SATs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, all of that. Right? Did you ever yeah. have your IQ tested? Not that I know of. I I don't know. So you but don't know. I will tell you this. So when I got to Wellesley, and, yeah. and really, I went to Wellesley because I had a teacher who had gone to Wellesley, and she right. kind of persuaded me. I didn't know what I was going to do, and you know, I, I my mother never went to college. My father went to Penn State on a football scholarship. So what did you know? Oh no, kidding. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he wow. played football for the Nittany Lions between 1931 and 1935. Oh, this must have been a tough guy, your oh, father. My, I'm telling you, he was. You oh, know? My, um, military guy, yeah, football he, and, guy. He, he played football and he boxed. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Did and you he, ever see him beat someone up? No, I never did see that. <laughs> except for your brothers. <laughs> yeah, except for my poor brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they were, yeah. you know, causing him trouble. Would your mother step in when uh, he would oh, be? Oh, sure. She yeah. would. He would just get so mad at them because my brothers were very mischievous. They he, were. But he never hit your mother. No. Never. You sure? Yeah, positive. 100% positive. Yeah. All right, I'll go back and check. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so when you go to Wellesley, that's where yeah. you get the idea to be a lawyer? Well, when I got there, I thought I was really out of place because it seemed to me like everybody else was smarter. And so... Is it all girls? All girls. And the reason... I went to a huge high school, a huge co-ed high school. Right. Yeah. Enormous. Like 4,500, 5,000. Boyfriends, kids. yes or no in high school? Boyfriends, yes. 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 Serious boyfriend? No. No one you ever said, I'm in love? No. You had not been in love yet? No. Bill was the first guy you loved? No, no. There was, no? No, there was somebody before him. Yeah. Somebody before Bill that you would have considered marrying? Uh, no. But, I would not have considered marrying. But in love? But in love. But I loved him. Yeah. I we never him. hear about this guy. Oh, is this guy probably pissed he didn't uh, no. close the deal, <laughs> right? He should have locked that down, right? No, 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 he, no, 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 no. He would have yeah. been at Oklahoma look, last I, night. I, I mean, I dated right. a lot of different people, and right. I, I liked a lot of them. You were popular. I was pretty popular. Right. Yeah, I was okay popular. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boys were not your problem. Boys were not my problem. <laughs> right. But I, I never, I, I had not, until I met Bill, met anybody that I thought I would ever marry. You were not the cheerleader type, though. No. You were the studious academic. I was the student, and student government, you know, that kind of stuff, yeah. No Ooh. kidding. Yeah. So you must have somewhere in the back of your mind figured, hey. No, I like, I'll, I'll tell you another story. So. I Were you the type that would promise people free lunches and uh, and, and, and and more study hall? Or I mean, yeah, no, just, yeah, no, no, just great, you know, right. great homecoming parties. I mean, you know, right. that kind of thing. And I'm so, for that. I, I remember, I did run. I think, I, yeah, I did run for president of my high school government, as I remember. Did you win? No, of course not. Did some guy who? Of course, uh, <laughs> that one. And then you know, and 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 it was sort of foreordained because a lot of my you know boyfriends, they said you know, come on, we're not going to elect a girl. I mean, what are you doing this for? I said, well, because you guys, I have some ideas what I want to do. Okay, fine. He right. says so somebody else wins. Comes to see him and he goes, you know, I would really like it if you'd help me. And I said, oh. yeah. So I said, sure. Oh, you yeah. were really nice. I was nice. And I would have I, said, like, I you like know, doing things. What can I say? Right? Listen, I was surprised when even when Obama tapped you to be Secretary of State. So was I, I Howard. I didn't think, you know why? You know why I thought it was difficult? Wow. Because you were fully ready to be the president of the United States. Right. If right. I was you, would I want to be sitting with Obama? And in the back of my mind, I'm saying, I can be doing this. Well, I don't, I mean, not that Secretary of State is shabby. No, but that's the difference between running against somebody who you respect. Right. So he gets elected. He asked me to come see him. He asked me to be Secretary of State. And he basically said, look, we're in a mess. That's right. The economy has gone totally down. We have problems around the world. He said, I need your help. I can't do both. I'm going to focus on the economy because we're in terrible shape. Isn't that great? But I need you to go travel around and try to restore our relationships. That's an executive. And that's why I was honored to serve with him because, first of all, he is secure. Right. Not threatened by Not you being Secretary of State. At all. And also, you know, we did run a really close race. We had overlapped in the Senate for a few years, but we ran a really close race and it was touch and go. People forget this. I actually got a few more votes than he did, yes. but he got a few more delegates than I did. And But here's the thing. Here you, know, you were. You were already a senator. You yeah. had been a first lady and you weren't the first lady who sat there and made tea. You were the first lady. But I remember Hillary Care. Yes. That right. you were really into right. getting some kind of uh, protection for children. Right. And of course, you were vilified for that. I was. But, but, but <laughs> it's crazy to me. You had all this experience. Right. And then this uh, upstart, a uh, new senator comes yeah, but, into town. But, but, you know, there he had enormous talent. It's sort of like, oh, it's, I, you know, it's, your husband and, 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 and 
Barack the two Obama. Be, the two best orators. Unbelievable, both of them. And, right. And, and they, they just had whatever that magical charisma was. It wasn't phony entertainment. It was deep, positive security, integrity. I know what I can do for this country. Give me a chance. Very adult. Very, very but, adult. But, but that's adult. a rare gift, it right? Is a, it is. I mean, you yeah. used to get stuff, oh, your voice isn't right, <laughs> your, <laughs> your hair isn't know, right, you don't know that. how to speak properly, yeah. blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so, you know, did you ever sit there and say to Bill, how the hell are you connecting like this? Like when you <laughs> would watch him, I mean, it is quite a remarkable skill. It is a truly remarkable skill. Both and he and problem. Barack have it. Yeah. Yes, but the campaign yeah. seems to rely on that. And that's not re- well, I'm looking for a good executive to run the country. Well, I think, you know, look, I, you got to get both in the same package. Right. I mean, obviously, I think both of them were really good presidents and had to clean up a lot of messes, both of them, and and left the country stronger than when they found it, which should be the criterion. Are you friendly with Elizabeth Warren at all? I, sure. Yeah. You like her? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I realize I think you two have something in common. Listen hmm. to this. OK. I'm watching something with her on TV. Right, right. Sitting there with her husband. And Elizabeth Warren, you know, people don't see her humanity. They see her as sort of this, uh, just just this, I don't know, this senator who mm-hmm. has a plan. Mm-hmm. She's talking about, how, do you know what I'm talking about? No, here? I don't. All right. She's talking about how she met her husband. And she says, um, you know, I, uh, I went up to him. I saw this nice guy. I asked him out. I think he was her law professor or something and and like was kind of like really taken with him. Mm -hmm. And then after a few dates, she turned to him and said, will you marry me? Now, the reason I say I, 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 I relate this to you, I think I have this right. You're at Yale at this point. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there in the library, maybe. Okay. Right. And you see that Bill Clinton, a guy you don't know. Right. Is staring at you. True. True story. And you go up to him mm-hmm. and say, listen, pal, I see you staring at me. You're not into playing games. You're saying, I see you staring at me. So why don't you introduce yourself? Right. Isn't that the most vulnerable position a woman can put herself <laughs> in? Honestly. Uh, it could be. Uh, you know, it was true because I had seen him around campus. Right. And Good looking man. Good looking man. He looked like a Viking in those days. He had lots of reddish hair with a big reddish beard. Right. And so... Um, a reddish beard. A reddish beard, yeah. I wouldn't think you'd be attracted to a guy with that kind of hippie beard because at that point you're kind of we a Republican, right? Oh, no, no, no. That No, I'd left you, that. Oh, you'd oh, left that I, yeah, behind? Yeah, I'd left that behind. Yeah, that was my dad's uh, political uh, affiliation. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And, it, and you got into it for a while. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I well, did. Anything to please dad. Yeah, well, you know, you do a little bit, right? So this guy's walking around with a red beard. Beard. Yeah, and red beard. Uh, and hippies, right? You're wearing the right. costume of the day. Yeah, bell bottoms, the whole deal, the whole thing. Yeah, work shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you we, got it. We all thought we were revolutionary, yet we're all wearing <laughs> we're the same, same outfit. outfit. We're like following Chairman Mao, <laughs> right? It's very Beca- true. Because we thought we were being outrageous. Well, we were compared to where we had come from. I guess. You know, I mean, it was, everybody rebels against the past, I guess. Well, I used to wear that to school every day. And, yeah. and someone said to me, a, a grown man came up to me and he said, you know, you all think, all you hippies think you're so cool. He goes, but you're all just followers. You all wear the same exact True. thing. True. And, yeah. it, and I went, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're and right. I don't want to stick out. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see Bill, you yeah. are able to go up to him and say this. Yeah. And I said, I said, if, if you're going to keep staring at me and I'm going to keep staring back, we ought at least to know each other's names. I'm Hillary Rodham. Who are you? So that's how, wow. I, met him. That's how I met him. Were you nervous doing that? No. Mm-mm. Oh my God. I, no. I would never yeah. have the guts to even walk up to a woman. So <laughs> the fact that you could do that, but yeah. it is a vulnerable yeah. position because he could have said to you, Oh, I'm not staring at you. Get lost. Yeah. He could have. Right. He could have. Cause he could have been ashamed. And, and, then I, and then I would have known right then he wasn't worth the time. And he's brilliant because yeah. he's at Yale Law. Right. 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 And, and he's not a Rhodes Scholar yet. Oh, no, he was. Oh, he, he was a Rhodes. He'd, uh, he graduated from Georgetown a year before I graduated from college. And then he was a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. And then he came to Yale. So I'd been at Yale for a year. How do you get to be a Rhodes Scholar? I mean, that sounds like a very cool thing. It's what? a really cool thing. I think you have to be uh, nominated by your college or university, and then you have to go through these rigorous uh, interviews. I see. And so, and, and then he asks you out on a formal date. No, then, so then we know. I love a romance. Yeah. Okay. So, so then it turns out he'd never been there, but we were actually in the same class. <laughs> oh, so and why wasn't he going to yeah, class? Because he was working on a political campaign to elect 
somebody to something in Connecticut. You know, Boy, politics was, was his first and foremost love. You had to be with a go-getter. I mean, you were a hard worker. You 100%. needed... 100%. Well, also, you know, it was like... It, it it well it was just sort of magical and 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 electric magnetic. Um, Do so, you need, did you need to be with a guy who was into politics at that no, point? You no. just needed to be maybe with another lawyer. No, no, I did somebody who I thought was really smart with a good heart. I mean, that's what I was looking for. And also had ambition. Oh, had to have ambition. Absolutely. But by definition, if you've gotten to Yale Law School, you've got some kind of ambition to do something, right? Do you get job offers like crazy when you go to Yale Law School? Because I know a guy who who went to Yale Law School. He he was a freshman would start getting jobs. Yeah, you you get a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of recruiting done. Was your family looking at you as like a meal ticket in any way? I think, um, you know, my father was a big saver. Mm -hmm. You know, my father never had a credit card. Right. We never had a mortgage on our house. I mean, he paid, I don't know, $30,000 for our house in 1951 or something. Right. So he saved and saved. And uh, so I don't think he ever thought that. But um, after he died um, and my mother did have, you know, enough money from him saved up, um, you know, we just naturally all took care of her. So. I'm just wondering when when you get a kid who's yeah. going to Yale Law School, you go, oh, ka yeah. this kid's Well, if gonna... you need it, right. Right, yeah. <laughs> you got, you hey, got we, it. Let's bank on her. This is an insurance policy. You're not kidding. But, uh, and I would imagine, too, that maybe you, too, were thinking, hey, when I get out of Yale Law, I'm going to have some kick-ass job. But then you marry Bill and you go off to Arkansas. But People that's not probably... how, that's not exactly how it unfolded. Okay, so, so let's okay. get back to the romance. So get because, back to the romance yeah, part. Right. Um, so... Anyway, the last day of this class, um, he shows up in the class. Oh, and uh, looking for you, apparently. Right. Yeah. And so we're walking out, and he said, "Where are you going?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to register for classes for next year." And he goes, "Oh, I'll go too." So we walk. And, you know, those are the old days when you know you actually had to use pencil and paper to register for things. Right. And so I stand in line. I get up to the registrar. Where Bill and I are talking. Our first real conversation. And uh, the registrar looks at me and goes, Bill, what are you doing here? You registered this morning. <laughs> and so I knew that this was all about, you know, getting to know me. Right. Then we went on about a, a, a five-hour date where we took a walk. We went all across New Haven. We got to the New Haven. I mean, he formally asked you out. No, no. We're just like, where are you going? Like, no, this was not like a form. This was like, okay, I finished registering. Because it's hippie days. It's hippie days, Right. right? So we get to the Yale Art Museum and they have a Mark Rothko exhibit. And I said, oh, I didn't, I, I, I missed that. I, I wish I'd seen it because the museum was closed because it was on strike. Right. And or part, part of the whole university was on strike, as I remember. So Bill said, why, you really like Rothko? I said, yeah, I really, I really like him. I've never seen his stuff in person, but I've seen, you know, photographs. He goes, well, stay here just a minute. So he goes off. Mm-hmm. This guy I've just met. He comes back. And he has a gentleman with him. He introduces me to this gentleman. He goes, this is, you know, John the janitor. And John the janitor said he'll let us in if we pick up all the trash on the lawn. Oh, my God. Said, what an operator it. this so guy is. So we pick up the trash. Yeah. And then we get to go in and see the Rothkos. And then we end up in the sculpture garden. Do you know this reminds me of a John Hughes movie? <laughs> Dude, it, it, I'm not kidding. It was like uh, the, the, the guy takes the girl on the date and he gets her into the museum because he knows the janitor after the after hours. <laughs> I swear, I don't remember the name of the movie. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about, but wow. I mean, here we are. So See, this is a guy yeah. who is a born people person. He's a totally... Totally perfect. The janitor person. didn't know me at college. No, no one knew no, me at college. No, but I mean, Bill literally knew everybody who worked at Yale. I just he, about. He loves people. He loves, and you know what he says, which is so important. He says everybody has a story, and everybody deserves <laughs> to have their story told. He was some president. Yeah, he was a great. See, president. that's also yeah. another reason I felt it was a bonus. If you got <clears throat> to be president, I get you and Bill together yeah, working as a team. I'm well, like, I get two for one. Two, yeah, yeah. Why right. not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. 